All right, Pastor Pulaski, I want to get the update from you. All of America on this side of the border, we want to know what happened in those 53 hours when they took you away. I opened the church for anyone that was willing to come in, and that crime now is punishable by the courts and the police and the politicians. So the police SWAT team showed up at our church again, third time, and they dropped something on the ground. I was uh, I was not there. The doors were open. They could come in. I instructed the people not to obstruct the doors and not to lock the doors. If they want to come in, I said, uh, this time, let them do it the Nazi style. Let them come in and then see what happens. They didn't come. However, they dropped the document on the ground, um, a, a piece of paper. I didn't know what it was. I conducted the church service. I finished what I did. And then... Um, and we packed uh, everything and went home. On the way home, we got stopped in the middle of the highway and uh, we got arrested, both of us, uh, David, my brother, and myself for conducting the church service. We were uh, roughed up. I mean, I had, uh, this is four day. I still have bruises on my wrists and on my, uh, on my body. And um, my brother as well, they almost broke his shoulder and my shoulder as well. I was forced to drive all the way an hour drive to to the place that they took us, Spy Hill uh, a place, um, a police station where they were, um, you know, uh, taking all of our uh, belongings and, uh, and putting us into a fish tank. And... Uh, I was charged with my brother David for contempt of court order that was never served to us, was never given to us. I never had a chance to read it. And my lawyers, which they know for 14 months, we have lawyers that represent us in this insanity against the, uh, the tyranny, the medical tyranny, I call it. But they didn't contact the lawyers. They didn't contact me. They didn't serve me or my brother David. They dropped something on the ground and on basis on that, they said, you were served, and now you're in contempt of court order, which I was not aware of, and taken to custody. We were, we were taken to Spy Hill, and then we were placed separate, in separate cells. Uh, for 24 hours, we were deprived of sleep. We were um, placed in a cell, a concrete cell, without mattress, without blanket, without pillow. And I don't know if you have ever uh, tried to sit on a concrete block. You know, one hour, maybe it's fun. Uh, Ten hours, you feel every bone in your body. 24 hours, it's torture. It's absolute torture. You have to stand up and walk around. Mm. You can sit. You can lay down. You can use uh, our left shoulder or right. Everything is in pain. So that was the spine heel. However, there was some good people there as well. And when they saw how we were treated, uh, they... Um, they came and they said, hey, we, we need to change your circumstances. I have, I have here, I wrote down their name. So from Gestapo to a staff surgeon Campbell and APO Thomas Daniels. Wow, you know, even in the dark place, they're always God's children, some good, decent people. And they, um, they ask us if we need anything to eat, if we need anything to drink, if, you need to, if we need to go around and stretch our legs. And they provided us a, for, for a few hours before we were taken to another place with a mattress. And I was even given a coffee. Can you imagine uh, Thomas Daniels, APO, said, if I can, I'll, I'll bring it to you. And he made it himself. Uh, what, a, what a beautiful people. I just want to say not every police officer is wicked and evil. Not every jailer is a sick, a psychopath. There's some good, decent people that see what's really going on. And they came to our aid and, and they helped us at least for a few hours. Then we were taken to a Riemann Center, a jail. And I mean, again, Gestapo greeted us at the door. Uh, we were thrown into a fish tank filthy it looked like someone peed all over the floor uh, and we were closed there we were denied access to the lawyers uh, they did not allow us to phone our lawyers the lawyers didn't know what happened to us they didn't know we were transferred no one knew where we are and we were denied twice we asked and they said no way are you going to to take that phone call so we were forced to stay on the ground in the filthiest cell you can imagine and i thought to myself after all i was arrested because i opened the church and endangering people's lives before you know in the middle of pandemic uh, however <laughs> this is not about health because if this was about health this place would be spotless clean and they would make sure the hundreds of people are being taken to the fish tank 
uh, and, and the cell will be clean because you don't want to cross-cross contamination. You don't want to spread the virus left and right. But that was exactly the case after we were taken to another cell and we were observing the, the tank. They call it a tank where the new people are coming in. And one after another, a group of people were taken. No one cleaned that place. No one cared about virus or contamination. However, the jailers were wearing their uh, imprints. They were wearing gloves. They were wearing masks and goggles. So they were fully protected. But who cares about the inmates and and, uh, the people that were arrested? We were in the field uh, for a whole day. And again, a miracle happened. Because during the night shift, another staff surgeon comes and behold, he's a Christian. And he says, you know, I'm sick to my stomach. What is uh, what is happening here? I want to help you. How can I help you? And I said, please, at least give us a mattress. We are in this condition for two days now. Uh, Every, you know, our body is aching. Every bone in our body is, is hurting. Can you at least give us something we can sleep on? And uh, he provided us for three hours from three in the morning to six when we were taken to the to, to the courthouse. He provided us with a uh, uh, mattress and a blanket because it was extremely cold. We were shivering. And uh, and in the morning, we got from this shift uh, a coffee, which was, uh, which was amazing after the treatment from the Gestapo. We were taken to the courthouse. In the courthouse, we waited hours until we were able to see our lawyers. We talked to the lawyers, and then we were taken before the judge. The judge was, uh, was very sympathetic uh, and nice older gentleman, and he says he's going to grant us the release. And uh, he says 1230 should be signed and then you should be out of jail as soon as possible. However, that didn't happen. When we were taken to, to jail again, um, the, the people that took us, the officers that took us back, they were playing the most horrible, filthy music uh, that you can imagine. I mean, F this and F that. And we were transferred with another woman. And my brother says to them, come on, don't you have any decency? There's a woman here and, and here's a pastor and you're playing this filth. And the guy said, well, that's the only station that we can play here. And he kept playing this this filth. I mean, that was absolutely shocking. We were taken to the Riemann back again. We were placed in another cell, uh, dirty again. No one cleaned it. No one cared. Uh, when you sit on a bench, you were glued to the bench. I mean, that's how filthy it was. I don't know what they sprayed over there, some kind of a juice or something, but I had to really look for a cleaner place. I was in my suit from church and uh, it it was crazy. And then the jailer, one of the the guys just stood up and he did, you know, like, hey, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And they were laughing at us. They were pointing at us and they were mocking our faith right there. You know, it was the most disgusting thing I've seen in a long time from a professional, right? They should be professionals. This should never be uh, something personal, but it became very personal. We became political prisoners. The premier of Alberta came on public and he says, I will crush Pavlovskis. I mean, who says stuff like this? What have I done to him? What did my brother did to him? We feed the homeless people. He's people. We feed homeless people without charging taxpayers a penny. We do this out of our own uh, goodwill, uh, with our own money, with the volunteers. And instead of getting rewards from the government, we're getting punishment after punishment after punishment and now arrest. So we were released. Next Thursday is the court, and the judge is going to hear the case. The other side is um, charging us with contempt of court order, which is a serious charge. Uh, we, could, we could go to jail for that. Uh, and the charge is contempt of court order that was never, never presented to us, never given to us, never read to us. I was not aware uh, of that uh, document until... My son took it home, but I was already in jail. And I am charged with the contempt of court order that I never had a chance to even read it. And so that's the reality of their, of their tyranny. And um, next Thursday, I have to appear with my brother before the court and the judge is going to listen to the, to, to the both sides of the, of the story. Wow, Pastor Pulaski, it's... If we didn't see it play out before our eyes, we wouldn't believe it. Uh, Mario, I want to let you go first here. 
I, I, this is, it, I know this is Canada. It's another country, but it's right against our border. There's not a, a country out there that's been the closest to the U.S., not just in proximity geographically, but in beliefs. Up until now, we would have thought Canada was a lot like the Americas. We would have. And uh, the question I have, Gene, is what are the other pastors in Canada doing right now? Right. This is happening to one of their brothers. And uh, believe me, it's an outrage. It's an outrage. 